Hey everybody, it's Heather with Heather the Painter here. Um, I am going to go through a few little quick techniques on how to apply the hand-painted backgrounds to um, a variety of images, both with uh, low-key and high-key, and just with a couple minutes of very simple editing. And here I'm editing in Photoshop, but you can get the, uh, the same look and achieve that through Photoshop Elements or any basic photo editing program that will allow you to do layer masking and then adjust your layer mode. So this is the finished product, but I started out with a low-key portrait and they can be a little tricky because you have a lot of darks and a lot of contrasty dark pixels um, that will kind of stick to whatever you overlay. So I've taken the very first layer, I'll put it on normal so you can see it, this is one of the hand-painted backgrounds, and I honestly don't remember the number of them. Um, let's see, are hand-painted, I believe this one is number 66, and I just turned it sideways. So for example, I'm gonna hide that. I have taken this background, I've actually punched up the levels or the contrast by going to my layer adjustment on my layers palette and clicked on either levels or curves. I'm going to pinch my levels, pinch my whites, pinch my darks so it's nice and contrasty. Go ahead and flatten that by either hitting layer drop or layer merge down or control or command E. Using your pointer tool in Photoshop, or hitting V on your keyboard, we're going to drag that background to our photograph. And I'm going to place it kind of to cover up the entire girl. I don't want any of the photograph showing through right now. Uh, let's see, the original. Oh, we're actually pretty close. So I'm going to lift that a little bit. If it's too large or too small, you can simply go to Edit Transform or edit free transform, I'm sorry, or hit command or control T for tra uh, transform. Then you can pinch those corners, move it around, resize it, and then just click return to apply that. So with the first layer, if I can check on this one, I believe this one was on either lighten or overlay. So on the newly uh, placed background layer, I'm going to adjust my layer mode and a few of my favorite ones I like multiply, lighten, screen, overlay, soft light, and hard light are kind of my go-to choices and I think this one was either on screen or lighten. I like screen, I like what it's giving me so far. And I can double check that really quickly here by looking at my original and it was on screen. So let me switch back there. All right, so that one was on screen. I can move it and you can see like the dark contrasty areas of the background are sticking to more of the dark pixels of the photograph. So we can either build emphasis up on her face or emphasis a little bit lower below her chin so we get that nice V shape from the coat. Now we could leave it like that and have it as an art piece, but I've decided to go ahead and continue building layers. So in the next layer, we can see that we have one of our favorite pinks set to hard light. So I'm going to open up my full res backgrounds, and it was, it was either 36 or 37. I'm going to go with 36 right now. Once again, using my pointer tool, or V for victory on your keyboard, we're going to slide that over and drop it on. And you can see it's way too big. So we're going to hit Command or Control T or Edit Free Transform and resize that just a little bit. And adjust that from normal in our layer mode to hard light. You get a really cool look there. We're starting to get a slightly iridescent look. And let me go back to my original. Okay, that's at 100. 
Now again, we could leave it like this or we can continue to finish it. So I've got two more layers. I'm going to add one more hand painted background set to multiply. And I believe that one was, I think it was one of these. I believe it's 44. It's either that or it's 51. Actually, I think it's 51. You'll have to forgive me. These were done a while back. So again, I'm going to use my pointer tool or V on my keyboard. Just touch it and drag it over to my image. And it's way too large. So I'm going to free transform. And I'm going to turn it around, I think. There we go. And then I believe we're setting it to multiply. So I'm going to go from normal to multiply layer mode. Let me check what I had. Yep, multiply. So it's really starting to build up those smattering of brush strokes and broken texture. So it looks pretty cool there. We can always change your layer opacity. But for the last layer, what I've done is I have made a copy of my background by either hitting Command or Control J or simply dragging it to this dog-eared icon on your layers palette. I've moved it to the very top and I believe I've set it on overlay. So overlay, there we go, we get a really cool look. Let me make sure all my layers are set. Hard light, hard light, multiply and overlay. I'm going to drop my opacity to about 90. So we have a really cool look right here. It's almost like a sun flare and some iridescent and ir interference paint strokes going over top. So it's slightly different than what I had started out with, which is kind of cool with these backgrounds because you do get, do get unlimited amounts of looks and interpretations with them. So I am going to go ahead and delete the hidden layers because those are what I had to show you ahead of time. So we started out with this. Oh, and you know what? I forgot one of my layers. There we go. Would help if I had turned that one on. Now I can delete my hidden layers. You won't have any hidden layers because um, you would not have started out with other missing layers, but bear with me here. So my layer six, my blue one, I'm gonna tone that down a little. And this top layer, there we go. Now there's a pink line going down her mouth I do not like. So I can either adjust the opacity to that, making it lighter, or I can simply layer mask out that area just over her face. So we can take a layer mask, which is this uh, rectangle with the circle in the middle. And we can heal, uh, heal, hide a little bit of that with black. Just over her face. Or reveal some with using white on our brush. Now if we hit the back uh, backslash key, we can see what we have masked out in red. So now we don't have that pink mark down her cheek. So we can always toggle the top layer and bring that down a little in opacity. Or I can simply layer mask some of these outside background elements because I love what's going on with that paper. So I'm going to add a layer mask. Take a very soft brush, and this is literally one of my first two brushes. It's a soft brush, it's nothing fancy. And just brush in the top a little. Made it a little bit lighter. So it's hiding this top layer without deleting anything. So we can have the control to hide and reveal aspects of that layer. So that is one of them. Oops, let me. Sorry about that. 
So we can see here, we have our background, one of our blue layers set to screen, our favorite pink set to hard light, and one of another blue layer set to multiply with a copy of our background set to overlay. Now it's really cool that you can change effects by just simply moving the layers. But we're going to go back because I kind of like it how it is here. So we have a little bit more of a blue interpretation for that with her face. Now we can always change and adjust by clicking on our adjustment layers. Looks like a little half moon. And I can click on selective color which allows me to play with each of the color channels. So I'm going to pick up blue and you can see that it's making it either um, less magenta or more magenta. Again, less cyan, more cyan, less yellow, more yellow. So it adjusts just that color tone with the blue. Let's play with the cyan, see what we get. You get some really cool looks. And I would recommend when you're playing with these sliders, go extreme. Go all the way over to one side or all the way over to another. It's a lot easier to see than just scooching it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So go all the way, all the way. See where you like it. So it neutralizes it a bit. Then what I love doing with these, if you don't like the color version, is just simply turning it into a monochromatic print. So I can go over to my adjustment layers, that little half moon, and click on black and white and just simply adjust the sliders. So the yellow tones are lighter or darker. My cyans, my, let's keep those a little bit light. And the reds, we can get either very light or very dark. Again, each of these sliders, moving them will give you a completely different look. So we can turn that into a black and white. We started out with this. We gave it some really cool strokes and textures and just really nice brush um, marks on top of it with these backgrounds. Now we have this really cool black and white, or you can choose to keep it in color. I'm Heather the Painter. Please visit www.heatherthepainter.com.